Hey, Ozzy, what's up? Yep, I'll be over there. Actually, just turned it on right now. So, just starting. Then we'll switch over. I just gotta get ready. This is a little behind the scenes. The behind the scenes of the uh, chaos that I go through before I actually do this. I am the absolute worst. Although, I do got all my cameras set up now, so I'm actually pretty happy about it. Um, yeah, so there's the heck. So, All right, guys, I'm getting ready to head over there. Uh, you know what, Bristol? I'm going to do a... Uh, I did a stable sacrifice slapping yesterday. And, uh... Oh, shit, is my audio on here? People can probably hear me. That's pretty neat. I can hear him talking with Andy P. Bates. That's funny. That... Smoke again. I always take a big drag off my vape before I start it. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm very ritualistic, so I have to do everything in a certain order before I start it. Like, I should have been a baseball player if I just was, like, athletic and good at things. I would have been that because um, baseball players are very, like, they're very superstitious about things, and so am I. Like, isn't that weird? Like, I try to get over my superstitions, but, like, I have a lot of them. I have a lot of superstitions that are actually pretty funny and very very stupid like for example i cannot stand the number 13 literally like if anything's on 13 i have to immediately change it and when i say immediately change it, like if the volume of the tv is on 13 i like flip out like i have to put on 14 or 12 and there was a time that i wouldn't even put the tv on uh any odd number channel or volume i had to be even numbers that's when I was drinking, and that was pretty fucking stupid. Now, I changed the settings on my um, on my data, or not my data, my video. So, if the stream starts going bad, please let me know. I changed it up to 60 uh, frames per second. So, I'm, I'm, I'm broadcasting in 720 at 60 frames per second. Um, I can also do 1080 at... 30, but I figured I'd give this a shot before I did that. I think the picture quality of this thing is absolutely fantastic. I've got my macro camera set up now, so I have a real one. Check this out. Let me give you a little preview of what that's going to look like. Ooh, 
Ooh, there you go. So that's my macro camera. And you can see how clear you can see on that. Um, I may have to adjust it a bit because I have to get it pretty much right up against it in order for it to work. But that's that. So I've got everything now that I think I need in order to be a YouTube sensation. Glue gun's here. Glue gun. What's up, glue gun? Good to see you. Why don't we take a second and let's say hi to everyone who is in the chat. Let me change to top live chat and let's go to participants. I missed you guys today. I really missed you guys today. I was really looking forward to doing this. I had a little different assignment today at work, some things I had to do that were somebody else's responsibility that unfortunately due to something happened with them, they couldn't do them. So I had to pick it up and start doing that. So kind of a stressful day. I was busy. I was really, really busy. A lot more busy than I had anticipated when I uh, got to work. So I was really looking forward to getting home and I really get looking forward to building. And I thought about it last night. I went off and sounded like a little whiny bitch about doing stagger builds and I just need to suck it up and fucking do them because stagger builds are part of the fucking thing, part of the whole craft and I need to do them and I just need to shut up and start, stop being such a whiny little guy, like a two year old. So I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to do, I, I, I fucked up the stagger, staple stagger piece slap I had yesterday. I had to finish up some builds last night. And I fucked it up. So I'm going to start anew. I'm going to start anew. Plus the spacing on it was fucking awful. Because I don't know if you saw when I took it off the drill. I like actually pulled the the staggers off. And I had to like put them back on. But I fucked half of it up. So I was just like, fuck it. I'll do it anyway. We'll do it live. That's what I thought. But when I started doing it, I was like, this sucks. I was like going like this. I was like, I don't want to continue to do this. All right. Quit trying Damn it, Foggy Bob. Quit trying to break all my concentration. I got to say hi to everybody. Jeez. Like my shirt? Ohio State football. I had a guy ask me. I just got to say hi to everybody. Hold on. Carolina Coil Craft, get me distracted. I'll tell you, you guys. Ashley Brown. What's happening? Just saw Ashley. on my. I was over on the Instagrams before I came over here. Um, and just telling people to come over. Nick told me to do that. He said it's a good idea, so I'm doing it. Because Nick, that's what he's doing, obviously, and I don't. And he is, like, doing really well. So I was like, that's good advice, and I'm going to follow it. Black cat, white face. That is me. And my face is super white because I have a bunch of lights. Carolina Colecraft. What's up, dude? Love Carolinas, man. Love South Carolina. Love North Carolina. Hopefully I can move down there one day, and you and I can open a coil shop. Or maybe just, like, a, a skating rink or something. But we could sell coils out of it, too, if you want. Chessie, what's up, girl? Good to see you. Hope you're doing good. Crazy face, McGee. What's up, Drew? Drew, I, I watched both of your live videos that you did this week. Uh, I thought they were great. I actually learned a lot listening to you, just like listening to you talk about things. And you did a little bit about uh, mech mods and batteries and different things like that. And like I was like, this is great information. Different um, RDAs and stuff that you had used and things like that. So, yeah, very good. If you guys haven't watched uh, Crazy Face McGee's channel, please go over and subscribe and check out his videos. They're very informative. David Lee, what's up, man? Good to see you, brother. Easy Rider. How you doing, Easy? Glad you could make it, my man. Foggy Bob, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Frank. Frank. I love that name. I fucking love the name Frank. I think I'm going to name, like, the next thing that comes into my life of importance, Frank. I think I am, and it's not good. Uh, it'll be named after you, Frank, pretty much. Bull, what's up, dude? Good to see you. Somebody in here that I love, it's uh, Glue Gun. Glue Gun comes because he knows that since I am the general, or no, I'm the supreme leader of the Glue Gun Revolution. I'm like uh, the guy from North Korea, that guy with the great haircut. That's who I am in the Glue Gun Revolution. Glue Gun shows up. I'm glad you're here, Glue Gun. John, what's up, dude? Josh Rhodes. We did a, uh, we got a contest with Josh. That is going on this week. It is all you have to do is say thank you to a couple people. I hope that you feel inclined and you can win a uh, Dead Rabbit Squared um, with a set of coils already installed. Josh put in there who the coils are from. I, I actually forgot. I thought they were Nick's, but they're not. Great coils. Um, and uh, yeah, heat treated, customized for you. 
All I gotta do is say thank you to a couple people. If you can't do that, then that's not, you're not very nice. Michael Griggs, what's up, dude? How you doing? Nick Wiggins, my man, Nick. Dude, Nick sent me like, I, like a bunch of coils. They are, I put, put a picture up on Instagram, all the coils I have. Nick sent a bunch of coils and they are freaking unbelievable. They will be in giveaways. I've got them on the list. As I go down the list, uh, I think Nick, I think you were like maybe four weeks out. And well, you'll be our featured builder here on the Vape It Five. Church, what's up, brother? Patrick, how you doing, man? Thanks for joining. Good to see you. Randy, what's up, my brother? Good to see you, man. Taken. There it is. There he is. Taken a voot. There's a song coming out, Taking a Voop with Smith. I almost want to call him Taking a Voop Will Smith, which I think would be equally as funny. Probably not. When I first saw the name Taking a Voop with Smith, I fucking laughed. I was all, I was on doing a live. I was on Tommy's show. I started fucking laughing. Tommy's like, what are you laughing about? And I'm like, look at that guy's name out there. It's called Taking a Voop with Smith. I'm like, that's fucking awesome. Like, I'm jealous that that's not my name. I thought about that. TC Vapes. What's up, TC Vapes? Good to see you. Vaping Buck, I'm a neighbor. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Still vaping on your juice, dude. Still vaping on uh, vaping Buckeye's juice. If you haven't tried it, you uh, are very unlucky because it's fantastic. Tyler, what's up, man? How you doing, brother? Good to see you again. And my man, Mr. Woodtick Mike. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. All right, let's get back into the chat here. So, I did a little research today for you guys. I did some research. I am a researcher, as it were. I'm a researcher. Black cat voop face. That sounds black cat white voop. Black voop white face. Voop cat white face. How about black voop white voop? <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, so, um, okay, what was I? What was I just referring to? Oh, okay, so I did a little research for you guys today. I did some research. I am officially a researcher for this show. I looked at the numbers of teen smoking. It, it, it's been interesting to me because the, the teen smoking angle... Hey, Addy, how you doing, man? The teen smoking... My stick figure. What's up, brother? Good to see you. Teen smoking is obviously a major card for the opponents of the vaping industry. So I looked at teen smoking numbers and a couple interesting things that I saw. One, as we as we all know, the numbers have basically plummeted. Um, and it really started like in the mid to early 80s with a, was a stagel, with a, a decline. And then right when I turned 18, like 1991, 92, the numbers went up again. And they went up until like 1995, and then they've been going down ever since. So it's kind of funny that I smoke, and I started smoking around that time, that that's when the numbers went up. And I wonder what it was, because it was like three years of consistent growth with smoking. So I don't know what the why that went up so much those years, but it did. And it just happened to be around the time that I was an adolescent, and I picked up smoking, which is kind of weird. But the numbers now, uh, back to 2006 is the last study that they had. It's like 7.5% of teenagers smoke. 18 and under, I believe, is what they count. They don't look at 19 and 20. 18 and younger. So I just think that, that I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that proves, what that doesn't prove. I think it's a statistic that is uh, valuable, and I think it's a statistic that should be really... So you like that thumbnail, Nick? Like <laughs> kids smoking? Hey, I put that up there. I put that up there because I did a bunch of research on kids smoking, and the research thing I went to had that picture. And I was like, that that's hilarious to me. That like a teenage smoking site, like the picture that they have is like some like seven-year-old kid smoking a cigarette. It's like, that's not funny and that's not cool, but I'm putting that up as my picture to prove a point of how fucking stupid it is. So I think there's a few a few things that can be said. Now, the counter side of that and is that the use of electronic cigarettes among teenagers has gone up, and it's gone up pretty significantly since 2012. Um, and 2012, they had it, they had the data at 1.5 percent. Now they have it. Uh, 2016, they had it at 11.5 percent, with the increase of jewel pods. I'm assuming that number is probably higher than 11 percent now in 2018, but I don't know for sure. Um, I think it's something that 
needs to be certainly people who are advocates for the vape industry need to be fully aware of that number and something that you need to know um, when discussing with somebody who doesn't have the same opinion of vaping that I hope we all do. Uh, and, and quite frankly, no kid should vape, no kid should smoke, no kid should drink, no kid should really eat, sit around and eat fast food all day either. Really? I mean, that's not healthy. It's not good for them. And it's not good habits for them to establish when they're young. Because the habits that you establish when you're young, like for me, lead on into your adult life. And there's really no way around it. Unfortunately, that is the world we live in. And there's really not a whole lot that a government can do to change that. The only people that can really change that are the parents. So, um... Hopefully, I, I don't know how it will change, but hopefully parents do a better job of educating their kids to not smoke and, quite frankly, to not vape either because neither of them are a good habit. They're not good for you, like exercise and, and eating like a, you know, a, a high-protein, um, low-sugar diet, things like that we know now that are like really you know, healthy for you, you know, um, things like that. So. That is my soapbox, but I thought I'd bring that up because I looked at it today and I was just like, because I always wondered what would, what the, you know, what all the, the hoopla was about with the vaping and, and for kids and all that. And I just wanted to see, you know, check my facts, make sure that like, if I get in a conversation with somebody that I'm not like fucking sound like a fucking idiot, no kids vape, no kids this. Oh yeah, some do about 10%, about 10% do. And that's, that's way too high. Quite frankly, it should be 0%, right? Is zero percentage. Can you be 0%? I think, you, I think you have to be at like 0.001%. No, you can't be zero because there's negative percentages. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Bristol Vapor. I just picked somebody up to listen and yell at them. Bones. Bones. What's up, man? Good to see you. All right. So what we're doing today. What we're doing today is we're going to redo the Staples Dagger Fuse Clapton. We're going to redo it. As I mentioned before, I did not put as much. Oh, my kids left for vacation today. So listen to this. I'm at home working. Do you know where my kids are going right now? Do you know where they're on a plane going right now? They're going to the Dominican Republic. You know who's not going to the Dominican Republic? Me. You know why? Because I have to work. So how fucked up is that situation? My kids all left to go to the Dominican Republic for vacation. My wife and I are here doing this now not that i don't love you guys and like doing this but i can still do youtube from a fucking beach in Dominican republic i think they got internet over there don't they they got internet in the caribbean i assume i hope i know they do i've been there before i think they do i'll broadcast from youtube from there ride for the beach black cat you think i'm pale now wait till you see me in my, ba my bathing suit Woo! i'm pale as hell i burn your retinas All right, we're going to do it. We are going to do it. You guys ready? I'm going to start building this thing. I'm going to try to be a little bit more um, informative of how I do it uh, than I was yesterday. This is really just, uh, this is quite frankly just for you guys. Because literally, if I didn't have to do another stagger build my entire life, I probably wouldn't do it. But I'm going to do it. Because you know why? Because I love you guys. Why? Church, I love you. Taking a bit with Smith, I love you too. John, love you. Drew, love you. Jesse, love you. Love you guys. All of you. I'll go through the whole fucking list. You want me to go through the list tell everybody I love them? I'll do it. Dare me. All right. I didn't have much of a topic today. Like, I was like, what am I going to talk about? That's why I started looking at the stats because I'm like, I really don't have anything to talk about. It's hard doing this every day. Hard work. It's hard. Gosh darn work doing this every day. But I love it. I just don't really have a lot to talk about sometimes. Thank God I can just talk for no reason. If I couldn't, I'd be screwed. Well, I can't see anything. I got too much light. Too much light. Everything's blurred out. Can't wait for you guys to see the macro. I got all set up. You guys are going to like it. You're going to really like it a lot. All right, so I need about 12 inches. That's what. She told me, and she got it. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, I love you too. Love you more, Addy. Love you more. All right, we're cutting off some ribbon. I'm going to do eight pieces. You know why I'm going to do eight pieces? Because I'm fucking, I'm fucking awesome. That's why. You're probably like thinking to yourself, like, Scott's pretty awesome, but how can he make himself more awesome? Well, let me tell you. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to make an eight-piece ribbon stack. And then you know what I'm going to do with that eight-piece ribbon stack? I'm going to put a piece of staggered wire on either side, and I'm going to fuse it together. Then you know what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to put it in a drawer and never fucking look at it again. Now, I'll probably send it out of the giveaway if I get it done. It may not get done. I may just start it and start working on it and show you guys how to do it and just throw it away. <laughs> I fucking hate them. <laughs> we'll see. I want to get my stagger better this time. Take my time. You know what I mean? How come anytime I think about when somebody says taking their time, I think about Billy D. Williams. I don't know why. Remember Billy D. Williams and his Colt 45 commercials? Young kids probably don't remember. Bill, if, for those who don't know Billy D. Williams, do you know Billy D. Williams? You should. If you don't, you're fucking not into pop culture. He was Lando Calbrissian on uh, Star Wars. Sky City. He was like the mayor of Sky City. Cloud City. That's what it was. Cloud City. He was that guy. He, uh, But he also used to do Colt 45 commercials like back in the day. And if you're not familiar with Colt 45, Colt 45 is a malt liquor. It's all in the United States. It's like... 9% alcohol. Fucking rock your ass. I got drunk as shit on Colt 45 one time, man. One time. Probably a bunch of times. One time, though. I could have got lucky with the, with a young lady, but I got too drunk on the Colt 45s. It was actually called Colt 45 Power Master. Remember that? He was a pimp. He still is a pimp. So anytime somebody says, like, you know, cool or something, I always think of Billy D. Williams. Like, I, that's just who I think of. So he's, like, the ultimate, like, in coolness to me. Him and Magnum P.I. That's what I think about. I mean, Tom Selleck's mustache. Tom Selleck's mustache is fucking flawless. Have you seen it? You guys seen Tom Selleck's mustache? It's flawless. It is. There's actually a, a rock song called Tom Selleck's Mustache. And there should be more. There should be more than that. There should be a movie called Tom Selleck's Mustache, in my opinion. I'd go see it. I would. High def. I'd go see it in 3D. See Tom Selleck's mustache coming at me. I mean, how could that guy not be lucky with the ladies with the mustache like that? Think about it. Like, it's fucking perfect. It is. Yep, Magna P.I. I can remember as a young child at the skating rink on Thursday night, skating away at the skating rink, because I used to go to the skating rink when I was a kid. <laughs> and I'd have to leave at like, uh, I'd have to leave at like 7.30 for my skating, with my skating buddies, you know, when I was skating. And uh, I had to be home by 8 on Thursday night because I had to watch Magnum P.I. And then Simon and Simon was on after that. Now, if you're old as fuck like me, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you're probably watching it too. Magnum P.I. and Higgins. Yeah. He drove a Ferrari. Remember that? He had a Ferrari and he always wore a Detroit Tigers hat. How many other YouTube shows do you think on today talked about Magnum P.I.? I bet you not many. See, you get a special treat. Ron Jarrett Nick, that's blasphemy. Ron Jeremy does not have a better mustache than Tom Selleck. How dare you say, sir? How dare you say? Tom, Ron Jeremy did have a nice mustache. We used to call him the hedgehog. Did you guys call him that? The hedgehog? He looked like a little hedgehog. Remember the first time my... I don't know how old I was. Wasn't very old, but... Uh, my buddy, had, we had sleepover at my house, and uh, I had a VCR in my den. Back then, you like if you had a VCR, it was like a big deal. It was like 80, I don't know, 87, 88, 89, like right in there. I had a VCR in my den. Well, my buddy brought over an adult movie called Real Men Eat Keisha. <laughs> hand to the guy, that's what it was called. And, you know, we're a couple kids, bunch of kids. We fucking watched it. You know what I mean? My mom found that shit. And I have never seen my mom so angry in her life. My God. You would have thought I had spawned Satan and, like, let him run rampant in her house. She was fucking furious that real men ate. Real men did eat Keisha. Just so you know. I, the plot not, I hope I don't uh, let the cat out of the bag. Kill the plot. Real men were eating Keisha that, that movie. And it was a lot of it. And it was 
Pretty pretty crazy. Yeah. Got caught watching a porno. That's terrible for a kid too, man. You feel like such a dick. Wires twisted. Hold on. Dallas was on Friday nights and followed by drum roll. Knots Landing. Knight Rider was on Friday nights too. If you remember that. I watched a hell out of Knight Rider. And I think uh uh, The Incredible Hulk was on then, too. Might have been on that day, too. Sometime around there. All right, so I got my ribbon stacked. I'm getting a piece of 27. I'm going to stretch it out nice and flat. Cut it off here. And I don't need a really big piece because um, I'm only making one. Put that back. About right here. And I'm just going to put this on my swivel. And then we're going to stagger it. I think I got my, yeah, I got my cap. Bring this back just a touch. And I'm going to try to do a much more efficient job of staggering this than I did yesterday. Well, let's just say I'll try to take more care of it when I take it off the, off the uh, drill here. Just get that up here. Fraggle rock knots landing clinton what's up dude how you doing man good to see you all right let's get this in here and let's make my uh before i do that let's make my loop put that on there it's 36 i'm gonna do the same uh stats i did yesterday 36 gauge uh stagger 27 gauge frames 0.3 ribbon Everything exactly the same. No changes. All right, so get this here. Put this in my cap. Just got to slide it. If I can get it in there. Come on. It's an awfully big hole to not be able to get into. That's what she said. All right, here we go. All right, so let's just wrap this up. In. All right. Okay, I'm just going to trim this up. So all I did was make a loop. Um, and that's it. You take something with weight, with significant weight. You make a loop. I'm going to take it here. I'm just going to put it all the way onto my chuck up here. And that will let me get everything else set up while I... Uh, Get ready to stagger this, and I don't. Then I won't have to take anything off, put it back on, like I always do. It's kind of a pain in the ass. So let's move that down just a touch, get it nice and straight. I'm just gonna run it just for a second. Make sure it's... All right. Your drill. Okay, so I've mentioned this before. Why do I have this behind my? If you ever like put something in your chuck, you pull it nice and tight, right? And then it looks like it's off center. Just release your chuck and let it sit and it will go right into the center and then center it back and then twist it back on again. Just release the tension. It will center it up for you. All right, that looks nice and flat. So let's do it here. 36 gauge. On. All right. Cut that off. And let's just start this out. Oops, wrong way. Perfect. Now let's take this down, tie it off, and put my loop in here. Now I just basically I opened up my uh, Clapton a little bit. I'm going to put this right behind the last loop, so it sits right up against it this back, tighten it up some, there we go, I'm just going to let this go, let's see if I got it, okay, bring that down here, doesn't look like it's wanting to do it, so let me just start it again, 
There we go. All right. There we go. This is my, I'm really, really trying to do this right face. Okay, that's that. Let's cut this loose. Cut the cut the weight off of that, and get some loose. And actually, it looks it looks really really good. So I think I'll have a much much easier time doing it this time. Hopefully, put that back over here. All right. And it's loose. Nice and tight. Cut the center too. Okay, so now I got my piece of. Now, some people, and, and, and I've seen it done both ways. Some people will take it and fold it and just wrap it around the ribbon. I don't do that. I leave both ends open. It's just easier for me to do it. Um, but you can. You can frame it just like a frame staple with the stagger. Um, one thing that will do, though, that kind of sucks is it won't you won't be able to move the stagger with it where if you, if you leave the ends open you can actually do that and it makes it a lot easier to, to uh to fuse it so let's get my ruler out here get it the right way we're going to cut this in half so i have 17 inches so we'll cut it at eight which is more than enough and take this here these are the ends that are going into my chuck. Here's my ribbon. Oops, there's a lot. It's 40 gauge there. Now, the one thing about using Coil Society ribbon versus using KP is it starts to come apart. KP doesn't do that. Hey, Joey, what's up, man? I need to call you. This stuff is not wanting to stay together. Now I'll get it. Let me just get it sorted out here. But the cool thing with the kids going on vacation is the wife and I get the house to ourselves, which will be very, very nice. And I think she's home, actually. I think I hear her. This one, and I'm gonna line these up this time. I'm gonna grab my glasses. Yep, she's home. Honey, yeah. what's up, babe? Oh. Looks like they came and got the uh, wagon. Well, I'm glad someone came and got it. Me too. Me too. Put these on here. Line this thing up. The kids left for vacation. Yep, I was here when they left. Yeah. Okay, that looks really good, actually. I'm actually really happy with that. So let's go ahead and tie this off. I'm just going to put it right into the grooves of the stagger. Run it all the way. Give myself a nice long lead of this so it doesn't want to come apart. This down. Isn't that funny? All right. Cut this 
this off. And I'm going to glue the end together. Even it up. Let's put some glue on the end here. That feels really good. I can actually feel the sides of it bigger than the ribbon. So it looks like it's laying really good. All right, now let me just clean this up just a little bit so I get it a little, get it as even as I can get it. There we go. All right, so let's put some vapor on this to cool it down. Hey, Philip. Hey, Kenny B. What's up, dude? How you doing? Jesse, I need to see you. Oh, girl, Jess, what's up, girl? Good to see you, hon. All right, so that's on there. Now, take my clothespins. I'm going to put three clothespins on it to keep it together. I'm also going to clean it up just a touch because I've got a little bit of 40 gauge running amok. I'm going to take my first one here. I'm just going to put it down by the end. My second one. Somebody mentioned this yesterday. I didn't. I didn't say anything. You do want to counter your. Uh, you counter them. Like I put one this way. I turn around. I put the other this way. Um, that is a really, really good idea because it gives you even tension on both sides. So let's do that. There we go. Now I'm just going to take go down just a little bit to about right there. And I put my last one. And that should be enough to hold it. I mean, it's not really, it shouldn't be that tough of a fuse. It should actually go fairly quickly. Now that my, as long as these stay. Another thing you want to do is make sure you don't smash your stagger with these clothespins. Just kind of put them on there nice and light. And I'm going to cut both of these ends off here. About right there works. And grab that. Did I get it? All right, so put this on the swivel. Then I'll get the camera all set up so you guys can actually see it. And we'll start fusing this sucker. And I got, got about a half hour, so I should be able to get a large majority of this done. Let's move this down as far as we can. Close that up, move to the side. I gotta get all this stuff out of the way before I bring the camera over. And we'll see. I've got to put it really, really close. So we'll see if it works or not. I may have to work on that, though. But we'll see. Hopefully I can use it. Okay. And we're going to stagger it going forward or going clockwise is how I'm going to stagger it. That is perfectly centered. All right, perfect. So I need these two tools. I need this. I can put this away. Don't need any more 40 gauge. Put that there, put it away. I don't need any ribbon. Don't need any more clothespins, I don't believe. Don't need my back scratcher. Although I do need my back scratcher, just not right now. Figure that out. I do need these. I'll clean these up real quick so I can see it. And I probably will have to bring that light over. I might just use the light, but I don't know. It'll probably drown you guys out, so I don't know if I can. Because typically I would just use the light as a... See, I don't know if... The... Now, let's see if I can spin this with that there. I can. So let's see if that works. Oh, it looks pretty good. That will work. Okay, so let's go back to the macro cam. Now you can still see me. How cool is that? Yeah, that's perfect. That will work. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at here. Let's get some. I'm going to move you guys back just for a second while I get this.
there. I'm just going to take it and wrap it around here. See, now they're anchored on there really good. Um, cut down loose. I don't really need that clothespin that close. I really, really don't need it that close. So I'm going to move it down just a touch. All right. I'm going to hold the, I'm going to actually hold the spool. So we'll see how this works. Let me make sure I can still turn it. That's out of focus, isn't it? Yeah. Let's see if I can get closer. Okay. Yep, I can do it. Okay. So let's get down here and see what we got. My volume. Yeah, I'm really small. Hold on. All right. Now I'm going to try to use the spool to fuse it, but we'll see if I can. Okay, it's not skip fusing it. Okay. Okay, so it's shifting a little bit on me. can't really use my pliers. All right, so let's see if it'll still go. I really need to use my nylons right now. Okay, as you can see, it's starting to bow out. So I'm just gonna move you back a second here while I do this, and I'm gonna put my nylons on it. And we'll keep rolling. And quite frankly, it's good to do, even with a simple one like this, like this isn't a tough one, but even with a simple one, it's still good to use your nylons. You gotta keep it nice and flat. And as you're fusing it, it's that ribbon is wanting to push up, and all that will do is fuck it up. Here we can see it. So, let me take this off. Is it, oops, it looks like it's wanting to come apart. That's all right. Okay, so I need to set this down real quick and get my tight, nice and flat, just like that. How's it look up there? You can still see up there. I'll move you guys down a little bit. There we go. All right. I don't know if I maybe I should make that. Well, am I in the way? Let me move myself down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this next part here. Okay, so it looks like it's shifting on me a little bit. That's all right.
move you guys down. What well, you guys are actually probably just gonna still see it. How's it look? Does it look pretty good? Look out for the peg. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got the lead done. Should just move this back just a touch. Move the peg. And all I do now is I just leapfrog them. So now I have this one here. It's in that gap. And I'll just leapfrog them all the way down. So can you see it? Yeah. You look marvelous. Hey, Tim, what's up, man? Thanks for joining, dude. Okay, it's hitting the thing. I gotta move it just a touch. Oops, I missed it again. Okay, so let's get this over here. Oh, yeah, it's too close. Daggone it. Well... You know what? If I just leave it right there, it won't hit it. So, can you guys see it okay? Yeah, fuck it. I can just deal with it. I need to do a little maintenance on this thing here. So I'm gonna pinch this out. Now you notice one thing I do whenever I pinch this together is I pull my drill tight. And you can see if you look here. See how that's getting too tight there? What's happening is that my fuse is getting too tight so you have to pinch that out and what I ultimately need to do which I'm okay now but I'm just gonna take this back pin which is actually I can't okay no problem but I need to have my pin closer because what it's doing is it's allowing it to uh, get closer right there oh that's actually perfect um, and you can start seeing the gap between the ribbon and the frame it's not good I don't want that I want it to sit in there real nice. Now, I'll, I'll be able to get it just because I'm not dealing with... You know, if I was dealing with like 0.2 and, and a smaller frame, I'd have a lot of problems with it. But since I'm doing, you know, 0.4, I'll still get it. But, you know, as you progress in building and you want to do... You're going to want to do smaller and smaller gauge and smaller and smaller wire, ribbon. Little things like that you got to be aware of. And quite frankly, the best way to do it is just do it nice and slow with your braces. And every like tenth uh, fuse you do, just uh, pinch it. Give it a nice pinch with your nylons. Yeah, it's hitting the camera. Son of a gun. I moved it back just a bit. Let's see if that'll clear it. Oops. Yeah, let's back this out a 
I see it by that. Oh, that looks pretty good. And that's a little further back. All right, that works. And I can actually see it starting to collapse a little bit. Once you get it on your... Uh, I don't want it to collapse by any means, but... Once you get it on your uh, on the uh, jig to wrap it, it flattens it out. You could even you could even flatten it yourself a little bit if you have a jeweler's block. Um, but I don't really want that to happen. Pinch using a little bit more force with the nylons. There we go. Whoops. The other thing about it, too, is every stagger build I've ever made, one side always looks better than the other. So one thing that I always forget to do is check which side looks better before I wrap it. That's one thing you should try to do though. One side's gonna have a better fuse, one side's gonna be straighter. it down and about halfway done so move this out of the way oops you'll notice so like I said with my clothespins I'm just leapfrogging them just leapfrog one right over the other one I always have a brace on there exactly how I want it. Just position them roughly, I don't know, maybe half inch to three fourths of an inch away. Get it right there, pinch that out. Get you guys balanced a touch. And we'll back you up. There we go, that looks much better. Okay, pinch this out just a bit. Not pinching super hard either with the nylons. I hate doing stagger builds, Juan. I mean, this is not I, I, okay. I get it. It, it is a, it is a good looking coil, and I like it. I like the coil itself. This is not fun. Like doing this back and forth, like it's just not fun to me. I, and but it certainly is something. Some people really really like doing it, and you can really create some beautiful art with it. You know what I mean? Um, but it's just not. I don't know. I like the ones where I can zip through them. That's the ones I like. I will say this. 
I got a staple stagger fuse Clapton way before I got an alien. Way before. Probably two months before I got an alien. It's not really that... If you can do the staggering, you can do a staple stagger fuse Clapton. It's not really that hard. I think most builders would probably say that, that they got a stagger before they got an alien. Oh, I'm almost done. I've only got about an inch and a half left. I'm done with this thing. Let's just get this thing done. Gosh darn it. Now I'm starting to get anxious. Or not anxious, but uh, impatient with it. I'm just starting to speed through it. So take my time and finish it up. How much time do I got left? Okay, I'm going to go a little over, but I'm just going to go get this thing done. I don't want to deal with it again. ribbons want to come out of there but we won't let it get it in there nice and framed I could skip one, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. Right. If I skip one, I'd have a, be able to get a run of straight wire for a while, but so I'll wait till I get down to the, the lead and then I'll skip one.
side is real pregnant so we want to come out there oops A little bit more than I can just basically mess with it. Almost to the lead. Oh, thanks, Clinton. Appreciate it, man. Have a vape, Scott. I know that's right. Trying to get it done, brother. really want all oh, my past sorry guys I gotta move it down yeah, almost done so that is pretty much the rest of this here is pretty much my lead oops yeah it's gonna be four inches so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna skip one and then just go all just go straight down What the hell? I'll just go ahead and do the whole thing if it's going to be like this. Until it stops being like that. Yeah, let's make like a. Make somebody a series. Staple stagger piece. It'd be, damn, it'd have to be big as hell though. Eight pieces. But I'll just go ahead and just keep doing it if it's just going to stay like this. Oops. That's good. It's starting to fuck up. <clears throat> All I had to do is skip that one, and it was going to be super easy. I just didn't want to skip any during the actual uh, real part of the coil. I didn't want to switch it. All right, so let's cut this loose. Put this off to here. And let's cut this off about right there. And use my nylons to flatten it out Let's get a nice flat metal edge 
faucet. Make sure that you guys take a look. So that's it right there. Set it down. Let you guys can see it. Let's see if there's the beginning of it. There it is. Staples Tiger Peas Clapton. Let me get into focus. Focus. There it is. All right. Go up to here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not bad. Not bad for kind of rushing it out there. The end of it is, I'm going to cut a little bit more of that off. I don't like that end. Let's see what I got here. Yep, four inches. That's what I was looking for. So, be a nice five wrap on a three and a half mil. Flatten this lead out a little bit. Oh, let me get back up. All right, guys, that is it for the Vape at Five. I've been on here for an hour and seven minutes. It is six o'clock, and I am ready to have some dinner. I will uh, be putting this into the giveaway this week. So, um, just be a single coil, but you guys can have it. <clears throat> so that is, as they say, that. Not really that tough at 36. If you're going to try it, try it with, um, if you've never done one before, go ahead and try it with 36. As long as you get your stagger right, you'll be able to get it. It's really, really not that tough. Um, it's a pretty basic build as far as, I think aliens are a lot tougher. I think most people do. But um, if you haven't done much staggering, and you want to try something, give it a shot. Yep. You're welcome, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Not a typical build, but one that I wanted to do with you guys and just uh, kind of give you some tips on how I do it. Make it the easiest you possibly can. All right, guys. You're welcome. So I will see you again tomorrow on the Vape at 5. Tomorrow is Wu-Tang Wednesday. You guys uh, enjoy your night. Love you. Be good. If you're in recovery, stay strong. I promise I will too.